Right, good morning everyone and welcome back to the Average Golfers channel on this uh, a bit of an overcast morning at Wallasey Golf Club but I'll tell you now, this is some golf course. No matter what the weather, it looks pretty damn good and uh, we'll be hitting a few of these irons down there very, very shortly but those irons are what I consider to be the top five forgiving irons for mid to high handicappers are oh, well, what's available right now and I know this video is due, do you know how I know it was due? Because James Robbo put his out a few days ago and I always follow suit just a few days later. So here's my top five most forgiving irons of 2021. Yeah, that's right. I must thank James Robinson for his little reminder here. He put up his top five most forgiving irons for mid to high handicappers. And like I said, I am following once again, James. So thank you for the heads up or the reminder at least. Uh, I will say as well, don't forget to pop on over if you don't have not seen James's channel, which is unlikely. James Robinson Golf produces daily content. I think he's done daily content for about three years now. Incredible achievement in itself. Go and check out his top five most forgiving irons and see how it compares to mine. Mm. So the first thing we need to establish is what quantifies an iron to be in my top five of the most forgiving of 2021. Well, first of all, all these five clubs will be very similar aesthetically. And what I mean by that, they'll have a fairly thick sole unit, they'll have a thick top line. They'll be a bit bigger heel to toe than what you'd go to the other end of the spectrum in terms of a blade like. And in theory, the mass that's packed in there is where the technology is to produce a bigger sweet spot and therefore provide a bit more forgiveness for off center hits that you and I are likely to produce out there on the golf course. So that's what my top five will be made up of. The way I'll be separating them is kind of like aesthetically, uh, how they, what, which, which is better looking, which is better priced. Sort of putting a package together of what I think separates the fifth from number one in my hand right now is what I consider to be number five. We'll pinch that T and I'll tell you what that is once we've hit this short iron off this fantastic T position. Right, slightly left we want to be here. And that's why these irons do what they do. High launching, that's bounding down the middle. My number five, let's get this list started, is the G425 from Ping. Now then, what quantifies it, what puts it in fifth? Well, first of all, I think with the G425s, they did a great job aesthetically. I think these look really good in terms of shelf appeal. They're also made by Ping, and first of all, you've got a lot of trust in that brand. There's a lot of reliability in that brand. You know as a golfer that in terms of forgiveness, I think Ping make the golf club or at least the irons for the masses. It performs really, really well right throughout the bag. It's not the biggest of top lines, so I think profile it sits quite nice and will appeal to a number of golfers, a broad spectrum of golfers. It launches the ball really well. I think it's got plenty of forgiveness in terms of off-center hits. The one thing I don't like about G425s is the sound and feel. And that's the thing that I would slightly mark it down on. They've never got that quite right in this model quite yet. It's not a big deal for everybody, but for me, that's where it mark it down. And that's why it comes in at just number five. Now, next up is this iron in my hand. And this iron makes this list for a number of different reasons. And it's not just about performance. It's not just about forgiveness. Even though I know I said this is my top five forgiving irons of 2021 but it meets some other critical criteria that will appeal to a lot of people. Oh, what a launch that is. Can we make the green? Oh no, we make the front bank of the green. So what is it? And why did that feel so good? Because it's incredible that it feels so good, but it costs so little and this gets in here not only just because it looks good it's also priced incredibly well which like i said will appeal to a lot of golfers out there and will appeal to a lot of golfers who are perhaps starting out the game or looking for this kind of club but then also don't want to invest heavy in terms of some of the price tags that are attached to some of these others it's the wilson d9 I think first and foremost, it looks like your classic game improvement iron. It has got that thick uh, sole unit. It has got that thick top line. From the back end, I think it looks pretty decent. It certainly looks as though it's been put together really well. 
But the big deal for me is that price point. It comes in so much lower than the rest of them. And like I said, if you're looking to get into this game, arguably this is the type of iron set that you're looking to buy. It's perfect in terms of its price point, but as you've seen, I've just hit number five, which was the 425. I've just hit the Wilson D9. Both of them identical in terms of their ball flight and how high they launch. So performance was little to split them. The big deal though is that price point. Now next up is an iron that I think could make this list possibly every year. It's really Mr. Reliable in this kind of grouping. It comes from TaylorMade and I think again, like I said with Ping, you can rely on this type of category of iron being well met in terms of the requirements that TaylorMade provide. It's bulky, it's got a bit more mass yet again. It is, I will tell you this one before I hit a ball, it's a tailor-made SIM 2 Max OS. And again, one of the things that for me on a personal level, this is one of the bulkier clubs in terms of its mass. This is one of the heavier ones in terms of top line. It is definitely right up there with the stronger lofty clubs as well, but it will appeal to the masses and it will certainly help every type of golfer. And for me, in this top five category of most forgiving irons of 2021. It's a no brainer. It gets really tough at this top end. It's hard to criticize this club in terms of why it wouldn't make number one, because like I said, it does things really, really well. It's massively forgiving. I find this club, no matter where you hit it off the club face, one, it launches and lofts the ball really well, which is something a lot of golfers will struggle with in this category. But two, in terms of forgiveness and distance wise, it always seems to make a way of getting there. So it's a no brainer for me. It's gotta be in this list. It makes number three. And on this par five off a tight lie, like I said, it's a bit of meat at a dress. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling confident. And why wouldn't you be? Wow, how good is that? I think we're just gonna miss that bunker. Oh, we're short of that bunker on the right hand side. Once again, the big deal with these clubs, all these clubs, is just how well they launch the ball, how easy you put a bit of club on ball, it fires up there. And the question you ask yourself is when you get a clown like me thinking he wants to go towards blades, why would you bother? Now, as we all know, lists and opinions and top fives from YouTubers, well, that's one thing, but really speaking, that is just one singular opinion. I prefer to get the opinion of the masses and you people out there. What are you finding that you've, what are you finding that you've found is the most forgiving iron that you've tested so far this year and perhaps put in your bag? So comments down below. If you're putting your top five together, either list your top five by all means, but certainly give me your feedback on what you think number one is because I know what mine is and it's coming soon. Now this for me is where it gets really interesting and it's where I divide the fifth into the top two becomes not about forgiveness because the one thing I'll say about all these irons is they are obviously forgiving, hence the title of the video. And I don't think you can really separate them in terms of forgiveness between one and five. They all do an incredibly job of being very user friendly. So then, how do you split up a top five? Well, I said at the beginning of the video, one of the things that would pay a, a, a key factor for me would be aesthetics, because there is a separation between the likes of number three, which we've seen, which was bulk and mass, and did an incredibly good job, compared to this, which is in my hand. It's the JPX921 from, I should say, Hot Metal. I need to add that bit, from Mizuno. We've seen this iron, it's done, in terms of reviews, in all this range of the 921 range, I think they've been produced an exceptional range of irons. But what they've done with this thing in terms of the hot metal is they've produced something that is incredibly good looking first and foremost. Mizuno make amazing looking irons, there is no doubt about that. And then to do that into the game improvement market, I think is a massive tick in the box because it's not the type of look that you would normally associate with that category, I'm afraid to say. This looks superb. Plenty of chrome, which I love. Lot really looks sleek. It's still got that sort of bulk of the mass of the dress, but again, they've done a two-tone color in terms of the top line, which gives a plays a little tricks on the mind. So it looks a little bit thinner than it is. And again, they've done exactly the same as that with the sole unit down below. It sits so nice of the dress and it feels really good as well. So for me, what Mizuno have done, 
and why it makes number two is yes, it's a mega forgiving iron. Yes, it's really playable. Of course, it is one of my most forgiving irons of 2021, but it's also one of my best looking irons of 2021 in a category that we're not normally associating this thing with. Oh, do you know what? Be on the flag. Be on the flag. Oh. That is about 10 yards left of flag. And the interesting thing in there, we was playing 185. That was a six iron that I've got actually in this 921. The other shots that you've seen me at this morning have all been with seven iron. Six iron with this playing 185. Launches the ball again incredibly well. I probably got that, you know what, just off the little bit of the bottom grooves. And it just shows you again, just how good these things are of compensating for a lack of strike. Even that seagull was impressed. So how's my list doing so far? And uh, we've got that number one spot to announce, but in number two, one of the things that I brought into the equation was aesthetics and feel. But really speaking, is that something that is part of the criteria when you're looking to grab yourself uh, the most forgiving iron that's out there right now? So have I got this one a little bit mixed up? Are golfers that are looking for this type of club is sound, feel, and looks really such a big deal? Come on, comments down below. Carry that bunker. Carry. Go. Oh, just missed left fringe there. I've come to what is one of my favorite golf holes here at Wallasey to, uh, which is 16 by the way, to announce what is my favorite, most forgiving iron of 2021 it goes back to what i said about number two this iron for me is just as forgiving as all the other five were but visually and feel wise they've done something completely different than any of the others have managed to achieve and i think it's the first time possibly that someone has managed to achieve this in terms of it feels incredible it launches the ball really well. It's got plenty of forgiveness, but it's packed inside a small profile. It is the Callaway Apex DCB. This iron release this year was for me a real sort of game changer again in terms of certainly for Callaway and their Apex range. They've got every spectrum covered right from down the sort of uh, MB range, a, a real player's blade, right the way through now to this DCB. The DCB is uh, its just an incredible iron. It's hard to pick fault with. Certainly for me on a personal level, the idea of blending this set with these kind of things, I think you want forgiveness more at the, the, the longer end of the bag. That's the thing I would say personally. I think most golfers, no matter what level you're playing at, can certainly get away in around your nine iron, your eight iron, perhaps your seven iron. You're certainly okay with different category as they like to put them into uh, irons. But at the longer end, certainly six, five, and four, and maybe that's seven, you want some assistance. So the forgiveness in this thing is incredible. It launches really well, but it's that feel element as well that puts it into its own little unique category. It is just very, and, and again, aesthetically, it looks really good. It's a quality, quality build. It's got a price tag that goes with it. Don't get me wrong, if you take this compared to the D9s, there's a completely different price point. So that's something you would also consider. But to get this into this small, compact profile, I'm not looking at what I think is a game improvement iron. Not whatsoever. Not in terms of that heel to toe length. Top line, yes, maybe. Certainly not the sole unit, but that overall satin address what does it look like it certainly doesn't look like a super game improvement iron and with the forgiveness factor thrown in it's why it ticks every single box and a little bit more and makes it my number one choice for the most forgiving iron for mid to high handicappers of 2021 i'd encourage you to go and try every single one of these irons there are a few others that are possibly thrown into the mix as well the good thing for you is right now, there's so much choice and option. And also in terms of budget, like I said, we've gone from the D9s, the top end uh, price wise would have been these and the JPX 921s. So again, plenty of choices out there 
for you to make your decisions on. And the thing is, like I said earlier on in the video, this is one singular opinion. Take no notice of it, use it maybe as a little bit of a guide, that's all, but go out and try them yourself and bag yourself a set of irons. It'll certainly make golf just that little bit easier. It's a tough old game though.